Well, Isaac Newton can be seen as following both Descartes and therefore Galileo and Boyle. He looked at these results about the motion of the planets and tried to come up with a theory that would explain them. He was a brilliant mathematician. He was one of the inventors of the calculus, uh, together with Leibniz. And through very clever geometrical calculation and arguments involving calculus, he came to the conclusion that if you postulate a force of gravity acting between objects in inverse proportion to the square of the distance, that means if two bodies are um, two units apart, the gravitational force is a quarter of what it would be if they were one unit apart. If they're five, three units apart, the gravitational force between them is one-ninth. Now, suppose you have a force like that. So the closer things are, the more gravity is there, there is between them. And suppose you postulate that the force of gravity is proportional to the mass of each body. So the bigger an object, the more gravity there is on it. And suppose you postulate that the acceleration of a body, that is the amount it deviates from the straight line motion that it would otherwise take, suppose you postulate that it deviates from that in a way that is proportional to the force and inversely proportional to the mass. So the bigger the force, the more it accelerates. The bigger the body for a given force, the less it accelerates. What do you get? And the answer is you get elliptical motion. Now that is a fantastic result. You have this problem that people have been trying to explain for centuries, millennia, the motion of the planets. You have Kepler coming along and giving predictions that are far more accurate than any previous attempt. And hot on his heels, you have a, an explanation of elliptical motion, which is amazingly simple in terms of just one force and one law. Not only that, exactly the same theory with exactly the same equations could be used to explain the motion of cannonballs on Earth. If you drop a stone or throw a stone, the motion can be explained by exactly the same equations that Newton used to explain the motion of the planets. So again, just like Galileo, one of Galileo's big results was that the uh, the substance of the moon looked very much like the substance of the earth with you know, mountains and valleys and craters and so forth. Now we find that exactly the same laws can be used to explain the motion of both. Newton also proved, incidentally, that a vortex could not generate elliptical motion. It's almost impossible to have a vortex that generates elliptical rather than circular motion. So Descartes' theory which had never been that popular in Britain anyway, was discredited. Over these years, incidentally, uh, Descartes' theories lingered much, much longer in France than they did on this side of the channel. There was quite a lot of nationalism about these things. OK, now let's reflect on this. We've got this wonderful scientific achievement. It's perhaps the most important scientific work ever published, Newton's Principia. But think of that in the context that we were looking at before. We had the background of the Aristotelian theory of motion, which ascribed desires to physical objects, which saw them as analogous to human beings or animals, desiring, striving to reach particular objectives. And that seemed objectionable, occult, weird, spooky. We want to get rid of that. We want to go explain things in a very down-to-earth, mechanistic way, one thing bashing into another. That seems much more comprehensible, much more subject to um, human understanding and analysis. OK. Descartes' theory of the orbiting planets fitted in with that, but Newton's doesn't. Newton is postulating this weird force between bodies. 
How can the earth be attracted to the sun unless it knows where the sun is? How can the moon be attracted to the earth unless it knows where the earth is? It seems very peculiar. So a lot of people objected to Newton's postulation of this gravitational force. They didn't like it because it didn't conform with the ideal of mechanistic understanding. Others, particularly followers of Newton, said, no, no, it's a proof of God's existence. Uh, we know, don't we, that matter cannot think, right? It's the kind of power that matter can't have. Of course, matter by itself can't be attracted to another body either. No, it must be God's action. So it's a proof of God's existence that things move in the way they do. Now, Newton himself took an instrumentalist attitude. Very famous uh, phrase, hypotheses non fingo, I feign no hypotheses. So Newton was asked, what do you make of gravita gravity? Well, he said slightly different things at slightly different times. But the most famous response of that of his was to say, I'm not going to try to make up any explanation of how gravity works, why it does what it does. All I'm going to say is that the observations are consistent with it working as I describe. So we've, I've got these equations which explain how gravity works. Okay, it's proportional to the masses of the two objects, inversely proportional to the square of the distance between them. If you postulate a force like that, it explains the phenomena. I'm not going to go further. I'm not going to try to explain why. Maybe it's God's action. Maybe there's some sort of ethereal fluid that somehow brings it about. But if the behavior of things is explained by this theory, that's good enough. Now, this is a, well, I've called it methodological instrumentalism. Um, instrumentalism is essentially the theory that, that when, the, the view that when you have a scientific theory, what matters is the results that it delivers. So let's suppose you have a scientific theory in terms of atoms. As long as it delivers the right results, you don't care about whether there really are any atoms. Maybe there aren't any, any atoms. It doesn't matter. If the theory delivers the right result, that's good enough. That's instrumentalism. You see a scientific theory as an instrument for delivering results. And Newton took something like that attitude to gravitation, and as we'll see, it was very influential. <clears throat> 